Okay, this is uh, an explanation of our some of our original plans and postulations regarding implementing version control at open source ecology. Um, so right now, uh, within this organization, we have many different mediums, media, with which we share and collaborate um, with within our organization and also with the outside world. Um, we've got lots and lots of different digital platforms with which we exchange information. Um, there's social media for giving broad overview, a broad overview of the projects, uh, providing our, our fan base with updates, um, and communicating with the public in general, arousing support. Um, then we've got, and that, you know, this is things like blogs, uh, social, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, you can read them, obviously. Uh, we also have internal communication, which is for use uh, within the organization. Um, obviously, as an open source project, we've um, we want to leverage communication. We want to leverage intellectual uh, output from all over the world. Anybody who wants to help with this should, and we want to um, we want to have these people communicating seamlessly. Some of the ways we do this are email group, um, shareable documents, uh, wiki reference. Um, these things, the wiki and Google Docs, are maybe not the best forms of internal communication. They're more of a, more supposed to be, wiki's supposed to be a reference, but, uh, and we also have media for storing our files that we, that we share and, uh, and the, actual, the actual content, the instructions, um, which we provide to the world to actually build our projects. This is the most raw form of, of data that we have right now. Um, so. Right now, we're very spread out. We have a lot of redundancy within the project. Um, there's people will, within the organization even, we're building instructionals. We're, we're showing people how to do things and putting it on Dozuki, right? And then someone else is building an instructional for the same thing and putting it on the Wikipedia. And people are changing these things all the time and, and stepping on each other's toes. And, you know, maybe someone is, uh, if, if you're making changes to a Wikipedia article that's been changed 200 times, um, and you don't you don't have uh, a lucid way to observe the histories of, of this of this article of this change, then you might be doing the same work that someone else has already done. Likewise, in parallel, if if there's another document out there that someone else is already writing on, then you're doing redundant work. Um, so what we'd like to do is centralize all of this information. Um, and deploy it to different sites. How this would work for instructionals, for example, um, is we have an XML or, or text document right here. This is stored on GitHub, which is a, a version control content management platform. Um, so an, this, this file doesn't have to be XML. It, it's just some, some plain text, some bare bone, minimal form of data. Um, that contains instructionals. It contains texts about uh, what a user should should do and, and pictures that make that more clear. And it also uh, contains um, recursive instructionals. For example, uh, you know, if, if you have an instructional that explains how to build a brick press, you're going to have an instructional for how to assemble the feet and an instructional for how to assemble the legs. And then both of those instructionals go into the overall CEB assembly and this will show you how to put those together. So, so you contain this contains recursive instructions. Um, then, with this bare bones model that we're version controlling on GitHub, that everyone everyone who's on the interior, everyone who's within the organization and making contributions, we're all with this this single document. We we centralize the content and uh, and distribute the front end, distribute the presentation. So we make scripts that automate the process of deploying this information. So from the text file, uh, we have a web bot, uh, an automated program that formats this for the wiki, for the Dozuki, for Instructables, maybe for our own website. This can change down the line. It doesn't matter because our content is shared and everyone's on board with it. Um, and the, it leaves the format as uh, something that's 
you know, we, we, we have content that's uh, what we call um, format uh, ambivalent, right? I mean, it, we, we don't care how this is displayed. It's all about the actual content and being able to share and build that seamlessly with each other. Um, so this also applies, you know, on GitHub, we're, we're going to have code, we're going to have instructionals, we're going to have electronic schematics, and, uh, and maybe links to CAD files. There are a lot of um, barriers of entry. There's, uh, it's, it's difficult to do with CAD files, and we're discussing solutions for that right now. Um, but we want to we wanna refine the workflow for how, um, how, how we relate our developers to our users, um, and how, how the content flows through from being refined to being presentable to the larger public audience and people who actually want to implement these machines. Um, so we begin with a stable branch. And this is, these are ideas that are presentable to the user. And let me explain this graph a little bit. So, um, so these are what are known as different branches of a GitHub repository. Um, you can. Uh, and, and, and then this flows linearly with time in, in this direction. So um, when you branch a repository, you, you're just saying, I'm not going to mess with the things in this main repository. Let me just check out my own version, and I'll mess with it. And then when I'm ready, I'll put it back. And whoever's managing this branch can approve or not approve my changes. They can take what I've made and just um, and make sure that it merges in a way that's not disrupting any other um, developments that have been made. So we're going to start with stable. This is things that are presentable to the, uh, our, our larger audience, things that are ready to be built, things that are uh, safe, or as, as safe as we can get, um, things that are, are a refined product that we feel ready to present. Then we move to testing. These are things that we want out in the world. We want people to be building them and prototyping, but there's a lot of uncertainty to them. We haven't rigorously tested them yet, um, we can't safely say that, uh, that they're ready for deployment. So we, we, we branch into testing, and from testing, we split off to make design changes. Within this team, anybody can contribute to it. They, they branch off a of design, they make design changes, and feed it back. Um, and these are changes to the actual machine itself, um, and, and, the, and the way we, we structure it. Then we have someone who's managing the, the, the design branch who's, who's, um, who can approve or disapprove of all these changes that are being made all over the world and make sure that it fits with, you know, th th this is someone who's uh, a leader, who's uh, very familiar with the design, with the product, with what we want it to do, what the goals are for the product, and uh, and what, what changes would be acceptable? Um, what changes are actually incremental progress versus what things have already been tried, what things would maybe interfere with other aspects of the design? So, so they're approving or disapproving of the changes that are being merged in. Um, and then we're in the documentation branch. And that makes sure that for all the changes that have been made in the design branch, we have to make sure that we make those changes accordingly in the instructionals that we're deploying. So, Whoever's managing the documentation branch makes sure that those changes uh, are appropriate, that they conform to our standards of, of format, um, that they're clear, and that they're going to uh, work well with our deployment scripts and be able to get sent to Instructables, Dozuki, etc. Then it merges back into the testing branch. And this happens over and over and over again. People check it out, go through the design and redocumentation process continuously um, until. Uh, and, and, and the only the, the people who are ready to build it, the people who don't care about actually modifying the designs, can just grab it from the testing branch and make those changes and then work with our design team seamlessly by reporting those issues on the GitHub, on the GitHub issues page. And those issues can be assigned to individuals who can commit to fixing them. Those issues can be uh, marked as dependent on another issue. We can say, oh, we need to fix this issue before we fix this issue. And in that way, we, we really segment the design personnel so that we have, um, we make a distinction between uh, someone who 
wants to actually modify the content um, and someone who wants to build and contribute with ideas. Um, and in doing so, we, we build a product that's, uh, that's more refined because we, we limit and control uh, the contributions most selectively um, and make sure that we're meeting unified goals even though we've got contributions, hopefully thousands of, the contrib of contributions someday that are coming in from all over the world. 